What's up ghouls? It's Blaze and welcome back to my channel. Excuse the lack of clothing, I am clothed, but it's just too hot for literally anything of life. It's too fucking hot, it's like 30 degrees. I hate the summer, I hate the sun, so I'm hiding inside. I was taking some pictures for Instagram, but it's too hot to keep moving around and moving things and setting things up, so I'm over it. I'm just gonna sit down and film. So today's video is going to be the start of a new series on my channel. I am missing the autumn like hell. I'm missing Halloween. So I've been binging paranormal experience videos and I just think they're so interesting. So I thought I would film some for you guys. Um, so all of these things that I'm gonna be talking about did actually happen. A lot of people may not believe in the paranormal, may not believe in ghosts, whatever. Um, if you don't, this probably is not the video for you. Um, I don't really know. <laughs> I'm not going to lie for views because I don't really get that many views anyway. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to tell you my experiences. You can believe it or not, but I know it happened. So wow, that sounds a lot ruder than I wanted it to. Um, so I've sex I've written down all of the experiences that I can recall and I've split them into categories so today's video as you can see is category touch so it's times when I've been touched or I've felt something paranormal so possibly the most interesting not sure but yeah I thought I would start things off on a high note I'm obsessed with these right now Harry Bow funny mix vegetarian it's these little stars. I just want packets and packets of these little stars. So good. Maybe I need a mukbang of me just eating like all these stars. All of them. In the UK. All of them. Okay. So, I'm ready to start. So, turn the lights down. Put your earphones in. Listen to the video. Get your, I don't know, pumpkin spice latte. Hot chocolate. I don't know red wine if you're feeling it, get your beverage, get cosy, let's get into it. So let's cue some spooky music to get us into the paranormal mode. My first paranormal experience in terms of physical touch um, happened be about three years ago now. So it was in October, spooky I know. Um, it was actually at my older sister's wedding. So she got married in a really old hotel um, in the New Forest. I can't remember the name of it. That's really bad, I know, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I don't remember the name, but I know it's like a really old hotel. They have some kind of link to uh, Lewis Carroll that wrote Alice in Wonderland. I believe he was like inspired by the hotel or something. I'm not sure. It was a really like magical hotel. There was this huge great staircase that came up and span round or curved round the rooms were huge they were really old the garden was adorable and it had this giant chest set it was a really really lovely hotel but during the ceremony so we're all sat down and i'm in the front row i think yeah it must have been because i was bridesmaid so we sit down and we're in the wedding and my sister and her husband are you know saying their vows and getting married you know wedding stuff and I feel this hand on my shoulder, but it's not, it's not warm, it's not a human hand, and I have like short straps, so I know that it's not human, I know that there's not a physical hand on me, but I just feel this, like it's really light, like it's almost there, but not there, and it's on this shoulder, and it's as if someone stood behind me, and they're resting their hand on me, like they're there with me, and it wasn't a scary feeling, it was like a really, comforting feeling so I feel like it could have been my granddad there saying like I'm here I'm watching the wedding and it's really nice I don't know it was just like a really nice comforting feeling and that's the first time I've ever felt a spirit so that was really really nice it was in like a really pleasant way so it was really nice um, so my second paranormal experience in terms of touch happened in my student accommodation so my student halls are, I'm not entirely sure how old they are, um, they're not, like it's not a super old university, it's Southampton Solent for those of you that care, um, 
So I was staying in the Kimber Halls and I was on the first floor. Um, I don't remember the room number. I want to say it's 118. I think that was right. 118, I'm pretty sure. Um, so it's an even number. I don't like even numbers. So that freaked me out. But yeah, so that was my little room in halls. And I know for a fact that people have died in student halls, not necessarily those ones, but I know in my student halls, like in Solent student halls, people have died, like 100% confirmed. Um, and obviously there's a lot of emotion and a lot of energy in those halls. It's hundreds of students, possibly first time away from home. There's stress, sadness, missing home, like excitement. You know, there's a whole bundle of energy going on in those halls. So I, it wasn't late, but I was going to bed and I was on my own. I turned all the lights out and there was no noise. I don't know where my flatmates were, but I, I think maybe they'd gone out and I hadn't gone out because I know I was alone. So I turn over to go to sleep and I close my eyes and I feel this tap on my shoulder. So I turn round and expecting to see like an apparition or something because again, I'm alone. I know there's not a physical person tapping my shoulder. It always seems to be this shoulder because I was sleeping facing this way. So I feel this tap and I turn round and there's nothing. So I say, is anybody trying to communicate with me? If you are, make a sound. Dead silent. I'm going to ask again if anybody is trying to communicate with me, make a sound. Nothing. So I say, if you want me to leave you alone, make a sound. Nothing. So I say, right, that's it, it can wait till morning, and I just roll back over and go to sleep. Again, the touch wasn't threatening, it was more just trying to like get my attention, like, I'm here. So um, I never felt that presence again it was a I feel like it was kind of immature maybe young like a a young teen or not like a young teen a young adult like I don't know it wasn't threatening in any way it just was like I'm here like kind of playful um but yeah I didn't hear from that spirit again so maybe it was just passing I don't know but that was it was kind of funny actually that one I the way I was like waiting for a response and nothing happened and I was like right I'm just going back to sleep <laughs> Okay, so in that same um, university halls, I had another experience with touch. Like I said, there's so much energy in those halls. I'm sure those of you who are, can maybe kind of, you know, when you can feel the change in energy or sense the kind of energy, I'm sure walking into somewhere like that, you could definitely feel the energy. Um, so again, I was in bed. This time, Jake was there with me. He's my current boyfriend. We met when I was in my first year. So he was staying over. So it was the morning and we'd woken up from sleeping and I was still really tired. I think it was a Sunday. So I was like, I'm just gonna go back to sleep. I don't have anything to do today. So Jake was playing on his phone and I like drifted off back to sleep. I remember I had one hand here and then the other hand like on the duvet. I don't know why I was sleeping like this, but I was. Um, and it's like a really, really squished bed. So I'm kind of like, it's a single bed and we're both in it. So I'm squished up like this and then Jake's next to me squished against the wall. And I'm drifting off back to sleep and I have this dream that there's a figure on top of me. I'm in the exact same room, I'm in my halls. I'm, you know, my dorm room is exactly the same as it was in real life. But there's this dark figure on top of me and it's skinny. It has like a thin head and a thin neck and it's just dark and it's on top of me and its hands reach around my neck and they start squeezing and it's getting tighter and tighter and I can't breathe but in real life I can't breathe and I'm gasping for air and I don't know if you've ever if you've ever been choked and you your air supply is cut off your whole body starts to go numb and it starts to tingle and that's what my body was doing in real life and I woke up like coughing and spluttering unable to breathe like grasping for air and Jake's like what is wrong what's going on and I was like I can't breathe I can't breathe and I told him about this dream and he was just like what the hell and like obviously if I was choking myself in real life he would have seen so it wasn't me but I just lost the ability to breathe I could feel these hands around my neck and I could see in my dream this spirit but in 
Jake didn't see anything, so I don't know, it could be like sleep paralysis, but it was definitely some sort of paranormal experience and it was pretty fucking scary. I wasn't really scared to go back to sleep in my halls, probably because every night either I was at Jake's house or he was at mine, so I was never really alone there sleeping. But I didn't feel that bad vibe again after that, I don't think. Um, never anything that sinister, I never felt that kind of vibe again, so again, could have been passing, I don't know, but it was very strange. So the last kind of physical touch or feeling a spirit happened probably five or six days ago. So the building I live in is ridiculously old, like it used to be a huge stately home in I want to say late Victorian era, then it was knocked down and rebuilt for um, just before the war to house um, people in the Navy. What are they called? Navy men? Uh, Navy people? I don't know. People in the Navy. It was built to house them because I live in Southampton. It's like a huge like dock town. So it was to house people in the Navy. Um, and then the war happened and blah, 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 blah. Basically, it's just a really hella old building, hella old ground, and you can tell, like, by looking at it, my mum says it looks like an asylum, which is why I love it. Um, yeah, so it's a really old building. So I get kind of a weird vibe. I feel like I'm not on my own in the building. I feel like there's, there's, there's definitely something here. Um, I don't know if there's been any actual recorded deaths. I wouldn't have a clue, but I can feel that there's something not quite right about this building. So... I am in bed, it's, it must be a week ago today because I was off work, so I was off work last Tuesday too, and I had been up, I'd taken some pictures, recorded a video, and I thought I'm so tired, I'm just gonna get into bed, chill out and play Sims. So I get my laptop out and I'm playing Sims and I'm getting sleepier and sleepier and I think I'm gonna have to go to sleep because I can't stay awake any longer. My eyes are starting to close. And I'm wondering where Pumpkin is because usually if I'm, you know, ready to go to sleep or I'm laid down, she comes to come she comes to nuzzle with me a little bit and I can hear it sounds like she's eating at the end of the bed and I'm thinking what the hell is she eating because her food is like way over the other side of the flat and then she we have like this ledge that goes um like half, all the way around our room but about halfway down so it's like paneling at the bottom and then like painted wall at the top and the ledging is probably I don't know probably like this wide so it's just wide enough for her to walk all the way around it and quite often in the middle of the night or just whenever she'll wander around then she might jump onto the bed she'll come over she'll see you and she'll get bored she'll jump back up and she likes to wander around a lot so I'm laid oh kick the light I'm laid there about to go to sleep and then I feel her jump from the ledging onto the bed and I feel the little indent and I turn like I just move my hand to stroke her I can't feel her and I look up and she's she's not there, she's not in the bedroom, she's in the lounge and she's not jumped off of the bed because you can hear all of the floor is laminate and you can hear her little like beans on the floor and it's so cute. But yeah, so I didn't hear her jump off the bed, I didn't feel her walk past me, she didn't jump off the legging but something jumped off the legging because I felt it and there's a little indent but there's no no pumpkin. I don't know what the hell that was. Something just wanted to jump on the bed with me, so that was pretty freaking weird, and I wasn't asleep at this point. I wasn't like half asleep. I was laid there thinking, I'm gonna go to sleep. So yeah, it was very strange. Very strange indeed. So that is all of my physically feeling a paranormal experience tales. Um, that grammar did not sound correct. I'm not sure. You get what I mean. So that is all of those. Like I said, I'm going to have more series, more videos in this series. I've got one for sight and one for sound. Um, so they'll be coming soon. Comment down below your guys' paranormal experiences because I love reading them. I think they're so interesting. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed hearing all about my experiences. Um, don't forget to subscribe for more and also a few of you guys have been saying that my videos have not been coming up in your feed so make sure you click the notification bell 
wherever it is, it's somewhere, um, and that should helpfully notify you when I upload a video. I also post on my Instagram and Snapchat when I upload. So my Instagram is macabre underscore goddess, always link below, and my Snapchat is Dixie Plum Pixie. So you can add me up on there if you want to stay on top of my videos. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time, bye!